Hi everybody, this is Avi from AF Math, and this is our fifth video on project management and our first video on the President's Network. So let's start with the definition. A President's Network are a node network that allow for the use of four types of relationship. Finish to start, start to start, finish to finish, and start to finish. And we will be going over an example and going over these terms and explaining exactly what we mean here. So remember our example from the last video for throwing the best house party? We had three ladies and each lady had her own task and only once all the three tasks were completed, the party could begin. And we spoke about the fact that this uh, activity was the critical one. Now imagine that there is only one person instead of three. In this case, one person will be performing all three tasks. Therefore, some tasks cannot start before the other one finish. For example, when you go to buy alcohol, you cannot prepare the house at the same time because you're not in the house, okay? But our girl can definitely start to bake and after some time place the cake in the oven and do something else like preparing the house. Therefore, we can do two activities at the same time. It is just a matter of managing our time properly. So we can say that some activities are overlapping. With the precedence network method, we can control or better plan that overlap. And this is what this method is all about. And this is why this method is actually practical and something that you can use in the field. So going back to our definitions, by using these relationships, we can better manage that overlapping. So let's start by going over the definitions and giving examples. Finish to start relationship. The first relationship, activity B, cannot start before activity A is finished. This is the most common type of relationship. And just think about it. Like I said before, if we drive to the store to buy alcohol, we cannot prepare the house until we actually come back. Start to start relationship. Activity B cannot start before activity A begins. These activities overlap, but understand the logic. There is no point to turn on the oven if we did not start to bake the cake, okay? Just kind of think about it and you'll understand the logic behind it. Finish to start relationship. Activity B cannot finish before activity A is finished. Preparing the food will leave your kitchen dirty. So you can't finish preparing or cleaning your house until you actually finished cooking. Again, I know it kind of makes sense and this is kind of simple examples, but when you have a big construction project and you have a lot of subcontractors working on site and you need to see which one comes before the other one and which one can overlap with the other one without, for example, having the painter paint your wall and a day later a plumber comes in and he has to do some work and then you'll find yourself in a situation where you have to paint the wall again. Okay, so this example is pretty simple just for you to understand the concept and once you actually get the concept you could use it in more complex cases. Start to finish relationship. Activity B cannot finish before activity A starts. The start to finish relationship is uncommon and not very practical. That is why you will probably only see it in your exam as a concept and never again in the field. For example, you cannot finish hanging a picture until you drill a hole into your wall. The first three relationships are actually important and make sense and this relationship, I have no idea why they even edited it. I've never seen it. I have one example from the exam that I did back when I was in school and I'm going to solve it, not in this video, but in another video in this series, and that will help you pass through your exam, and then you can forget about it. So, the last key concept, lag is a minimum obligatory waiting period between the completion of an activity and the start of the next activity. Remember the pie baking example? There is no point turning the oven right away because it will take us two and a half hours to prepare the dough. So only after two hours we should preheat the oven. Okay, that's the best way that you can think about it. Interruptible activity. This is actually everything we spoke about until now. It's an activity performed in two or even more separate parts. Therefore, it can be interrupted or even paused. We can start to bake 
then we can go prepare the house, then we can continue baking. Then once we finish baking, we can go clean the kitchen and finish preparing the house. Uninterruptible or continuous activity is the activities that cannot be interrupted. Once they started, they need to continue until they are finished. And that's really similar to the previous videos that we did until now. As always, now we have our first example that will make everything clear. We have a table, we need to complete it by drawing by drawing a logic or node network and performing the CPM calculation, which is what we did in the previous videos. And if no relationship is stated, assume finish to start, assume all activities to be interruptible, which means that there are no restricted floats and no need to calculate the total floats and free floats. So what do we have here? We have the table, which is similar to the tables that we saw until now, only we have a few new concepts here. So we have the tasks, the IPA, the duration, and here is the relationship. And here we have a start to start relationship and a finish to finish relationship, a finish to finish, and wherever it doesn't have a relationship, we assume finish to start. So let's take our table to the right, so we'll have more space to walk here. And also let's take the instruction above so we can walk. And if you remember our box from the previous video, so this time we will be working with a smaller box because we don't need the total floats. So we have our early start, early finish, late start, late finish, name of an activity and the duration. Another thing that we need to do here because it's not just start to finish activities like we had until now, we need to do a starting point and an ending point which all activities should finish at or start from because earlier we were just going from A to G but now we are going from start to finish. I will try to explain it as we go on and you will see why it's important. So activities A, B and C. Let's write those. We have a duration of 8, duration of 4 and duration of 5. These activities are our first activities so they all connect to our starting point. Next, because we know the calculations already, I'm just going to speed it up. 0 plus 8 equals 8, 0 plus 4 equals 4, and 0 plus 5 equals 5. Now activity D, we have a duration of 15, and it's coming from activity A with a start-to-start -start relationship, meaning activity D cannot start until activity A begins. The early start here needs to be bigger or equal to zero. So we're just going to pick zero. And now we have also a finish to finish relationship, meaning activity D cannot finish until activity A is finished, which means that the early finish needs to be bigger or equal than eight. Because our duration is 15, we don't need to worry too much. So we can say that zero plus 15 equals 15, and we met both conditions, our early start is bigger or equal to zero, and our early finish is bigger than eight. Now, what else do we have here? We have a log at the early finish, meaning activity D cannot finish until activity A is finished, plus another two days. So our early finish needs to be bigger or equal than eight plus two, meaning 10, and because we have 15 over here, it means that we've met our conditions. All conditions are met, we can move on to the next activity. Activity E, nothing to really expand here. We have activity E coming from activity B with an early start of 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. Activity F, notice that we have a finish to finish relationship with a duration of 5 days. So let's draw the finish to finish, meaning activity F cannot finish until activity C is finished, meaning that EF needs to be equal or bigger than 5. We could just pick the number 5 over here because when you think about it, we want to choose the smaller numbers possible and just think about it in a logical way. We want to finish as fast as possible. So we will pick the smallest number possible. We don't want to delay the walk. So let's pick 5, and then our early start will be 5 minus 5 equals 0. And this is different from what we had until now, which means that activity C and F will both start at the same time, and also end in the same time. And by doing that, we can actually save some time on the project. 
Moving on to activity G. I want you to pause the video and try to do activity G on your own. Notice activity E is also connected. So in activity G, it's coming from D and E with a duration of 10 days. And from activity E, it has a start to start and a finish to finish relationship and one leg, which is pretty similar to what we did in D. I just want you to try and do it yourself to see that you understand it. Okay, so here is our answer. Take a look and I hope that for your early start you pick 15. If we have an IPA of two activities, we need to pick the bigger number of the two for our early start. We picked 15, 15 plus 10 is 25. 25 is bigger than 7, we met our condition here. 15 is bigger than 4 which means that we don't have a problem here. And with the leg, 25 is much bigger than 3 plus 1, so we also don't have a problem over here. Moving on to our next activity, activity H. We have two numbers, 25 and 5. We pick 25. 25 plus 10 equals 35. And this is our ending point. And the H is connecting to our ending point where the project is ending. So now, as always, we need to start going back. So let's start by filling the ES and the EF before going backwards with the numbers that we got until now. And now let's start going back. So if you remember for the last activity, ES equals LS and EF equals LF. Okay, try going backwards on your own. Remember, if you have two options, pick the smaller of the two options. If you watched our videos until now, this should be no problem for you and it's a very good practice. In a three seconds, I'm just going to write all the answers here to not waste too much time on going backwards. And if you have any problem doing it by yourself or something is not clear, please go back to the video before and see how you actually do these calculations. Okay, so this is all of our numbers. Take a minute, pause the video, compare it with your numbers. Make sure you got the same numbers and let's continue. Now that you got all the numbers, let's fill those numbers in our table. And there is just one thing I want to discuss before we finish this really long video. I want to discuss what happened here. Okay. Now I know that you got zero over here. And if you would place the number zero over here, it will be 0 minus 8 equals minus 8. But what you need to understand is that there cannot be a negative number as everything takes time. You need at this point to go back to the logic of things and understand that there is no negative activity. Everything takes time. But because these activities are interdependent from one another, they could start at the same time which means that they could also end in the same time. Which means that when we are calculating the floats, if we get a negative number, we should just pick the ending float that we have here or whatever satisfies the equation, but we cannot use a negative number. Therefore, we say that EF equals LF. Take a minute to think about it, you will get it. Just actually imagine that A means cooking and D means cleaning and they can both happen at the same time and end at the same time and they both overlap and this is why there is no negative cooking and this is why we said that our EF equals LF. So stay tuned for our next video on President's Network.